Okay, so let's start with intros. Let's go from right to left. Start with Lou. Hey, my name is Lou Müller Kaul. I'm in Orlando, Florida right now. Uh, I'm originally from Germany, as you probably can hear. I'm a naturopathic physician there, and I've been working with bodywork for about 15 years, the last seven years as a rolfer, and now I also employ a bunch of massage therapists. Okay, I'm Jessica McCormick. This is the uh, second hangout I have joined um, with this group. I'm uh, an independent practitioner, or I guess I shouldn't use that word, I'm a, an independent massage therapist. Um, I call my practice Gesundheit Massage because I actually majored in uh, German language and culture uh, in college, lived there for about four years total, I suppose. Um, I recently launched my website and I've started uh, a blog, so I've got two of That's those exciting. out. It really is. I've got, um, oh, my husband has pizza. That's on the air. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. <laughs> okay. And my name is Jamie Rock. I am the owner of Portland Massage Therapy. I've been in practice for about 15 years and specialize in injury recovery, mainly deep tissue myofascial work. Um, and so that's it. <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll have some more joining us. I think Lori, um, uh, and Kelly said she might come to, so we'll see what happens as we go along. Um, a couple things. Let's talk about um, something that was brought up. Let's talk about the uh, a national board. I know we have the National Federation of Massage Therapists, but what do you two feel about having more of a national credentialing process? Um, I know Jessica mentioned in her uh, one of her comments on Google Plus about um, special having specialized certificates um, that are recognized nationally. What do you guys think? I would like to see that and I was a lot more hopeful about the NCBTMP to make something like that possible. I have to admit that I didn't really bother renewing uh, my certification with them just because I felt like it doesn't matter anyway. I was getting excited when they were looking towards having something more of an advanced practitioner certification because I thought that might be useful and actually I'm one of the few people who doesn't really believe in uh, the necessity of massage uh, licenses. I come from a country where it's just decided on who insurance pays for and most of the places that insurance pay for they have practitioners who study for two or three years and um, but there's still no license necessary. Anybody could say, I'm giving massages and they can take money for it and nobody's bothered by it. And that's what I'm used to. That's what I grew up with. That's why I don't really understand all the licensure um, requirements and how in some states that is always being discussed as if it, it is necessary to protect the customer. I just don't understand the concept. But I do believe if there was a certification that had certain standards that are clearly identified, then that would be definitely very useful. Um, I'm not too keen on their specialty certification. I'm really not. Um, I wasn't keen on the idea of them pushing their medical therapist, uh, massage therapist uh, um, certification. Um, I don't, I, what I appreciate is um, regulation, you know, uh, saying this is a massage therapist, this is not a massage therapist, uh, this, I, I do believe it protects the customer, it protects the Therapist, so you know you're act, you are going to someone who's um, paying their taxes. As touchy a topic as that is, you're going to someone who is providing what they are, what they're advertising on pain of, you know, losing their certification or licensing, um, and uh, introducing specialty certification. I feel that this is one more step toward requiring certification for, you know, if I want to work with children, infants, and in sports, um, with oncology. And I don't 
know if the uh, I don't know if we really have the research to back it up yet on whether or not having all these different modalities really matters. It, it matters to the client definitely. Um, I like I like deep work. Um, my husband prefers more superficial work. Um, I could see. I'll admit I could see. Um, I could see something for you know working with infants, reassuring parents. But if you're interested in working with infants, you've already got the continuing education units. You've got the credits there. Um, I'd rather the the CEUs speak for themselves rather than having to pay national even more to maintain yet another certification. Oh, I completely agree with you <laughs> on the specialties. I mean, I don't see any use in having something else other than the specialists who already teach classes and already have certification programs. I mean, if somebody wants to go towards the whole depth of a modality, they can go to one of the institutes and get their certifications. What what I was talking about earlier was when they had the idea of a dual certification where there's pretty much the basic massage thing and then there's the advanced practitioner who just has a lot more hours and has some specialization but it wouldn't be directly um, it, it wouldn't be like one specialty. I mean I, I, I'm all with you that that doesn't make any sense to me. But I didn't, I wasn't um too keen on the advanced certification either because mm -hmm. you've either been in the pro you've either been in the industry or the profession for enough time to be advanced or you haven't been. Um, there are always people who test well, so they right. could come right out of school, get their uh, basic certification, and then immediately turn on and get their advanced, and then mm -hmm. that's supposed to make them more marketable. Um, you know, according to whom. Um, we are still trying to educate the public on the benefits of massage therapy and if we've got all these conflicting, oh don't go to this person, they've only got basic certification, you want this advanced person. That's, I don't think that's going to help us. Well, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. The one thing, the one thing I think is, is crucial, um, I don't think there should be just a test for advanced certification. Um, there should be some sort of um, years, two, three years, where you have to be writing case notes, uh, be working close with another practitioner that has yeah. an, an advanced knowledge. Uh, yeah. I mean, for myself, I do a lot of injury recovery, and I'm, I'm constantly getting people coming to my office that have had massage therapists who really do not know what they're doing as far as recovery, injury recovery goes, and they, could, they made things worse. Uh, right. They drug out their their recovery time, um, or years later they still they still have uh, whiplash, for example, and and not a single massage therapist that they they saw actually touched their neck because you know we get in in, the, in, in Oregon the uh, schools teach that you're not supposed to work on the anterior portion of the neck, um, which is just obviously a joke. seriously, but yeah. I mean, what do you mean? Is it one of those endangerment sites? Yeah, that and the bottom, the back of the knee, and all these absurdities. Really? But these, 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 I mean, these people can be very well-meaning, but if they don't have the experience and the knowledge necessary, then these people who are not, we're not talking about, you know, relaxation massage, force massage, deep tissue massage, um, right. prenatal massage. I mean, we're talking about more medical. Um, mm -hmm. the only other, the only. Um, downside, like, like Jessica said, is it's not just a matter of taking a test, because some people test well, some people don't test well. Um, they get, um, you know, whatever nerves, they, 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 there should be more than just a test. Uh, there should be, in my opinion, two categories for massage, and that, to, that, to me, will protect the consumer more, um, because right now, you know, the massage, you know, in here is only 500 hours for Oregon, and a lot come out of school just knowing the basics, and immediately they can start uh, working with people who've been in car accidents, have severe whiplash, possible bulging discs, um, neuropathies, um, and they could make them worse for them. I mean, they could they could really do some damage, and I, mm -hmm. I think that that is something that we definitely need to talk about. Mm -hmm. I agree, and I, I did like the dual idea mostly because, um, I mean, in, in my opinion, honestly, it would be enough to have one thing. 
it, it wouldn't even need to be a dual thing. Because in my opinion, in order to do a basic relaxation massage like they do in most of the day spas, you don't even need a license. You don't need anything. I mean, that's just like rubbing some oil all over people. And it's, I don't think you can do a lot of damage with it, honestly, as long as the client is empowered to say, hey, that hurts, that feels wrong, that feels uncomfortable, don't do this. Um, I just I just don't understand why that needs to be a massage therapist who is licensed by the state and pays their dues and gets their continuing education credits every other year because what I see there is a lot of fraud too I I see these classes that give them live hands-on credits and it's 4000 people in a huge room doing qigong mm -hmm. And that's what they're getting their education for, and it, it's just mind-blowing. So what I was hoping for when they were talking about the advanced thing was that there would be something that is a little more serious, that is a little more geared towards what Jamal was saying, that people actually know something about injury recovery. But we got somebody new, so I think we got to say hi first. <laughs> hi, sorry, I'm late. Why don't you introduce yourself? No, sorry. Oh, you just do a quick introduction, and then we'll talk. Well, we were talking about um, national certification and specialty certification. So, go ahead. Oh. Well, I'm Lori Volkman, and um, I am with Massage Book, and I do the social media and PR. And so I'm actually really interested to hear what you all are saying about national certification, because it seems to be a pretty big issue among certainly the people we're dealing with, and um, it, it got a lot of... It got quite a bit of discussion on a recent post we had that featured Jamin, and so I, I think it's I actually really interested to listen rather than talk. So go go <laughs> for it. <laughs> well, I, I think I, I I agree with Lou. Um, I think it should be maybe I think there should be some sort of licensure for just general massage, um, just to protect people in a very minimal sense. Um, but we could probably drop the, you know, make it a 100-hour program uh, just to kind of give you some very basic anatomy, um, when not to work on someone, basically. Um, the and trouble then we could have more. Okay, go ahead. I was just going to say the trouble is um, there's so much in contention over what's important and what can massage therapy do. We're still teaching people that... Um, you know, massage isn't is not going to spread cancer. Um, you know, you you don't need to drink copious amounts of water after getting off the massage table. Um, and uh, you know, we still have people who believe that you'll miscarry if you get a massage. And there's there's so very much that I was That's taught That's a great as, subject. <laughs> you know, there's just so much that I was taught in, in school that was it, was it was presented as fact. And, you know, half of it I knew, okay, um, this cannot be true because of what we just learned in human anatomy. And the other I'm learning, okay, that's, you know, that's not true either. We need more. I think we need more standardization uh, I hate that term, I hate the concept, but we need something, you know, akin to standardization in our education if we're going to offer, I don't know, different levels of education for different certifications. It, it's, um, it's a tangled goes, web. <laughs> I think that goes along with kind of what you were talking about, too, with the CEUs. Um, I mean, I, I know a lot of really nice people that teach uh, <laughs> education, um, but I would never ever take one of their classes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they, they have they they absolutely have no right to be teaching, um, and we that probably one of the first things we should start with is education. If we're going to have if we if we want people to take us seriously, we want to be part of the medical community. We need people to take us seriously. We need to have higher levels of education, we need to have better teachers, and we need to restrict, we need to control uh, continuing education more than it is right now. Because at, at the, I mean, anyone and everyone, you, you can graduate from massage school and, and become a CEU provider. Um, that's, that's, just, that's just how it is. 
that's not going to help. I mean, I, I can have a certification in prenatal and, and you know, at least in class. Does that really mean, you know, that I'm qualified? I don't know. Prenatal is a giant joke anyway, and that's something that <laughs> Jessica already talked about. Is, I mean, seri and in those prenatal classes, they are talking about you know, all the things how you can trigger a miscarriage. I, I'm working yeah, don't, on several. Don't, don't massage the ankles. Don't touch the webbing and the fingers. Never exactly. mind how it's winter it's... and you're wearing gloves all the time and you've got a bunch of pressure on the webbing of your fingers. Sorry. No, no, no. You, you touch it and it's going to fall out immediately. It's just yes. going to go. That's it. <laughs> God, I, it, it, I would love it to started. be true. I would love it to be true because I've had um, friends who, you know, the first, uh, <laughs> apparently but the they first were pregnant, pregnancy they said, Can you is, help me? <laughs> Can right, you just the, their, their first pregnancy was just so long and so <laughs> tedious and it's just, Jessica, could you, is there anything you could do that would just, you know, um, and then, no. <laughs> I tried, you know. I, I said I don't. I this isn't gonna work, but sure, we you know drink this tea. I'll rub your ankles and your hands. And she was still in labor for so many hours. <laughs> you could always push down on her stomach. That might indulge. <laughs> 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 Do some deep tissue work right on right on her her navel. Um, I work with so several gynecologists, and they couldn't believe it when I told them. I mean, really, they were flabbergasted. They were like, "What? What? Who's saying these things?" That's <laughs> well, that, that is the water, the water thing. Having to drink so much water because you release the toxins. I mean, yeah, another, I hate the, the word network. toxin now. Even in the technical sense of it, I hate the word toxin. <laughs> well, it's a very if ambiguous term. What, is it, what does it even mean? I mean, we're talking about lactic acid. I mean, <laughs> what, what are we talking about? So. Um, what do you think? What do you think of uh, since you you brought it up, Luke? Do you think there should be a minimal licensure just so that you don't have creeps and you have someone at least, to, you know, there's a guy going out there for you still have guy. creeps. I mean, the problem really is <laughs> that you have creeps with licensure too. I I read about these things all the time and I'm horrified. And of course, it's especially, I mean, it's especially always bad for the male massage therapists who are out there and really want to do a good job and I employ two of them and it's always the same thing people are asking and it's men and women and they don't want a guy to touch them and in some cases it's just some weird hang up but in some cases it really is women who had bad experiences with male massage therapists who were properly licensed and all I mean it, that doesn't protect from the creeps mm -hmm. and I think I think if there was no license, then the customer would be more inclined to look for a proper certification and they would look more for, okay, what kind of education has this person? Because the license actually gives the customer a false sense of security, that those people are vetted and they're okay and nothing can happen to me because that is a licensed massage therapist. I, on the other hand, I do know why there is such a thing as a massage license and um, it, I know why people are doing it here and why most states are doing it and so I, I like German's idea of like this super minimal thing and everybody should know that's a super minimal thing that's just this hundred hour thing and teach them endangerment sites just teach them you know just do a nice little back rub mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I think the basics that a massage therapist that is basically relaxation massage just needs mm -hmm. to know when it's time to pass Pass this person on to someone else. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot out there that that really, you know, like I said, it's people who are coming in with, with serious issues, um, and they're 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 convincing them that massage is going to fix something, and they don't mm -hmm. even have the skill set to even get started. And I I think that's kind of the bad. And then this gets. I mean, that's why I really really want something because I want massage to be respected. Mm -hmm. um, massage. Like like real massage, <laughs> therapeutic massage, and and I think there needs to be a distinction between the two. For that, we need massage therapists to be less sensitive. <laughs> um, we really do. Uh, there's um, I, I've been on. I might have said this last time, um, but I've been on massage therapy forums online. And it is a minefield. It is all out war. If if I had never been to a massage therapist and I were looking for information on massage therapists and I came across this, I would never 
ever want a massage therapist to touch me, ever. I would never want to meet one because they are just so mean and so sensitive and just at each other's throats. I saw someone ask a question on ethics and, you know, it is, it is an insensitive question, but, I mean, insensitive in the sense that this person came in feeling safe. Okay, this is a space for massage therapists to ask questions. So I'm just going to point blank, ask my question, and, you know, they asked, should I charge more for heavier clients in the sense that, you know, if I want this much hair right. chopped off versus this much, they're probably going to charge me a little more for dealing with this much hair. It's a question of ethics, and everybody just tore this person apart. They never came back to this forum. I had even long since left the forum. I just decided to poke in and see, hey, what's going on here? And wow, just it's ridiculous. And even in school, um, one thing, we, we had to give these mock presentations, and one thing that I would want people to know, um, getting a massage for me is that I'm not offering a cure. I'm offering a treatment. This is my treatment room, not my cure room. And then one of my classmates said, well, people are going to, you know, there are people who believe that this is a cure. I didn't have a response for that, but now I would just say, um, science doesn't care what you believe. If you have such a problem, go see a doctor. If, you, if the doctor refers you to me, I will help you. Um, and, you know, I'm very much, you know, if you're really stressed out, come see me. I can help, but I cannot cure you of your stress. You need to analyze the other problems in your life. I cannot help you with those problems. There are other specialists for that, but we can't have that discussion. We can't have that discussion in forums because massage therapists, are incredibly sensitive and don't even bring up the subject of research or science in any of those forums. That's <laughs> true. I mean, I mean, mentioning science often it, it creates very strong reactions. Yeah, but which is really strange. Mm -hmm. it, well, I'm actually sentence. managing a. <laughs> I'm I'm managing a big forum, and there's a, just like another discussion right now where it, it really started escalating about the whole science question and. Well, I think it goes yeah. back to, in general, like we are talking about massage therapists, um, the education that they're getting um, is very, is not scientific. It's um, a lot <laughs> of the she says stuff. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I, the law are saying, I mean, those are all the, the, the how to abort a baby with squeezing the ankle thing. I mean, they're, <laughs> these are all just proofs of non-scientific things that, that a, a reasoning, logical person would question. And I would say the majority just take it, take it for face value, and then they, you know, they also they also spread it themselves. And so the second you start bringing up something that disqualifies something they, they really firmly believe in, they, they get rash. And again, goes back to our quality of education. I don't think it's. I think it needs to be. Yeah, what I want to. What I want to start offering is um, actually continuing education credits, online credits um, that are a lot about recent research in regards to massage therapy where we can actually say okay this this statement is proven, this one isn't, this is what the reality is behind this and that and that myth. So I'm extremely interested in working with any of you if you want to start creating courses um, start we'll, we'll start talking about that by email because I'm I'm really excited about getting more research out there that people can get their continuing education credits with valid scientific research instead of he said, she said, and all this anecdotal so-called evidence. <laughs> um, I absolutely agree, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to brainstorm a little bit on, on some things too, so we communicate. Um, that also brings up, it's kind of along the same lines, um, public perception of massage. Um, obviously, Places like Massage Envy are bringing massage therapy to a lot more people, but at the same time, I think they're also bringing the negative side of it to a lot more people. Um, they themselves are constantly promoting these misnomers, these absurdities, um, these different certifications that don't exist. Um, I mean, I just recently got somebody called me um, asking if I am certified in prenatal, 
uh, or if I'm licensed in prenatal, and I'm like, well, it's oh, yeah. the thing. Uh, yeah, I've I heard that. I'm licensed to practice massage. <laughs> There's no such thing. Well, the massage envy says that their people are licensed, and I go, well, Whoa. <laughs> I worked at Massage Envy for a month. I saw enough. <laughs> so, hey, what do you guys do you, do you think Massage Envy has, has brought anything good to the table, or do you think it's just negative all the way, all the way around? I'm on the, I'm kind of in the middle because um, I, uh, I like that, I like what it, I like what it advertises to be, not what it actually is. Um, you know, it brings, uh, it, it's brought massage into, uh, into the spotlight, but then people going in, um, the clients going in, uh, it probably lowers their expectations, and then for the therapists going in, their uh, massage envies, um, I think their pitch to therapists is kickstart your career with us. But then if you leave, um, you don't get to take your clients with you. Um, I mean, understandable, I suppose, but then there are all of these uh, don'ts for when you leave them, even if you've only worked for them for a month. Um, what, what kind of requirements are those? Would Depends. It does it depend on the business, or is the whole, um, or is every franchise organized the same way? No, they're not. And one of their promises to uh, to um, the client. I mean, just by being massage envy. This, you know, you'd think the massage envy in Portland is the same massage envy as in Palo Alto. But if you move from one to the other, um, your membership does not transfer. If you're a client, oh, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. They, um, I, I've read horror stories online, <laughs> just you know, tr for mm. them trying to transfer their membership, and if you don't use your massages within a certain point of time, you lose them. So you spent a bunch of money for nothing. If you, um, if you get injured, this is a popular one. You get injured, and your doctor says, um, I don't feel comfortable with you going to um, to get a massage. Which is another, you know, matter of education. Um, you can't put. Uh, you're, you're supposed to be able to put your membership on hold, but then I've read so many cases where it doesn't work. They still say, "Well, you didn't use your massage, and sorry, you lost it." Mm -hmm. yeah, see, I, I guess that's my problem too. I um, kind of digressing to what we were talking about. I think there needs to be a poo poo license, and then everyone that works in massage can have a <laughs> Um, but I think the sad, I think I think what tells is that the saddest part about it is you don't you don't go on Yelp and find a bunch of people complaining about McDonald's having subpar cheeseburgers, uh, right? Or, or Taco Bell because they they know what to expect. It's junk food and it's cheap. But for some unknown reason to God, they go to Massage Envy <laughs> and they start blasting Massage in general. It's like you're you're going you're going for fast food and it is what it is, and I know some excellent massage therapists that work there. They're just, for whatever reason, scared or just lazy, don't want to get out on their own. It's just fine. It's their choice. Mm -hmm. But well, there's it, valid reasons for working there. Yeah. I mean, if the individual business owner is actually running a good business, I, I know a couple of people here who are very happy with their jobs at Massage Envy. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, but I just, I just I know for like in the Portland area, you go on Yelp and have yeah. Massage Envy, and you have... Uh, I mean, one, you know, one, two stars, <laughs> five. I mean, <laughs> it's just people, are, but they don't. I, I don't know if these people are actually they under. If they understand there's something better out there, um, or if they just think this is just, a, you know, for thirty nine dollars they get some massage. Honestly, it's it, forty nine now. Or the <laughs> you can't really complain a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I totally get what you're saying. It's it's of course my experience is with all the clients that we pretty much get from Massage Envy. So in a way I'm grateful. <laughs> they get people to try out massages who never thought of it before, who think, well, this is the kind of thing that my mother-in-law does when she's bored. But um, 
and then they sometimes have a good massage therapist at Massage Envy. So they get that experience of what somebody yeah. who's really good can do. And it totally blows their mind because they had never expected it. Mm -hmm. But eventually that therapist leaves because they're there for one or two years or just one month. And then they make that experience that, well, you can get lucky, but mostly... Um, most people are inexperienced and they feel like they're being treated like on an assembly line then there's all the problems with the membership that Jessica was talking about and so we as a business pretty much took all these things and then made the better mousetrap so we have a membership but we do make it really easy for people to suspend their membership if something unexpected comes up we make it really easy for people to uh, we sent them gift certificates for the massage that they didn't use. They can give that certificate to anybody they want. Mm -hmm. They can, you know, we make everything like really nice and sweet and the way they want it. <laughs> of course, it's more expensive. It's also a lot better service. And so for us, it's working out great because people start out at Massage Envy. Eventually, they just feel like they're not really getting what they're paying for because it's also only 50 minutes instead of 60 minutes. And then eventually they end up with us and they're super happy because their expectations were already that low that then we just wow them and they stick with us. And they stick with us for three, four years and they have the same therapist because my therapists are also going nowhere because I'm spoiling them rotten. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy with them. <laughs> and the 50 minutes thing, that's, um, that's rough on everyone that's... Um the client is being cheated out of their hour. They don't. A lot of them don't realize you're paying for the hour. You're not paying for the time that the therapist's hands are on you. Yeah. And then the uh, the franchise wants you to have the next person on the table as soon, you know, if not before. I dare say before the other client is already gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I walked in one morning and my uh, my. My schedule was empty, and they said, oh, here's you've got one, and it's just, oh, okay, so it might be just a one-person day, and I, I kept getting little purple slips under the door because they kept filling in my schedule, and I end up working, you know, solid, which is, I, in essence, that's a good thing because then I have the work, and I'm actually uh, getting paid, Um Technically, you're supposed to get eight dollars an hour for every hour you're on site and you're not working with someone. Um, I think the the place I was working didn't do that. And really? Yeah, I I read the paperwork and then I talked to someone in front said I thought this was the case and I'll admit um, I downloaded online PDFs and I read them before I went in and signed the actual papers. So. You can chalk it up to my own ignorance for not knowing exactly what was on the paper that they said is exactly the same as what's online. Um, but, yeah, and you know, it, this doesn't happen at every Massage Envy, but apparently it happens at several Massage Envies that if you're not massaging anyone, you're not getting paid. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a labor law thing. And unfortunately, a lot of, and I, I think Massage Envy probably covers their best better than most because um, they're yeah. a pretty huge corporation. But I mean, I know a lot of chiropractors uh, who they have office um, where they they technically have all these massage therapists uh, employed by them, but then they 1099 them and say they're, they're, uh, they're, they're uh, subcontractors so they can get around paying them. And yeah, that's one of the those, big problems. Those are all, those are all illegal. Um, and I think there's another thing we... They should be teaching more in the social school, again, lack of education. Right. right. Uh, business 101, uh, non-compete okay. contracts are illegal. Um, I know that's another thing the sergeants be, people complain about is they leave, they can't set up shop down the street. It's like, or even go yeah, somewhere else yeah. if there's somewhere nearby that's, you know, a better fit. It's just, no, you, you agreed to not work near us. Wow. Well, it's interesting, yeah. Um, I I think Massage Envy, it, it, it's double a story. It, it did bring, uh, it has brought me a lot of business, so I can't complain too much because, like Lou, they, uh, they, see the <laughs> they see how bad it is and they realize my rates really aren't that, really aren't that mm -hmm. high if you compare it to what you're actually getting in Massage Envy. Um, 
-hmm. That's and exactly I'm, it. Yeah. yeah, I'm telling people you're uh, paying this much at Massage Envy, this is how much the client is getting. You're kind of expected to leave a tip. So if you leave this kind of tip, this is how much the client is getting. But if you leave a good tip, a generous <laughs> tip, then you're paying, you know, a lot more than you would be paying if you just go to, um, you know, a good qualified massage therapist. <laughs> no, I think it's hilarious that they try to keep. They they have like posted every five every five feet that you're supposed to tip them like twenty some dollars per hour. <laughs> You're, they're already paying seventy for an hour if they don't have a membership, and then Is it yeah. Really that high down, down in California? Because it's like I think it's forty nine dollars here. I don't. I, there's an inter like a first timers uh, rate, and then um, and then there's another. I, it's been I think over a year now um, since I worked there. I don't remember. I could just be pulling figures out of nowhere, but. Yeah, they're still paying way too much for those 50 minutes when they when it says you know one hour. Um, something else I want to talk about because we got about about 20 minutes um, mm -hmm. trying to keep this to an hour. And I, are you going to be turning out pretty soon, Lou, or are you going to hang out with us for another 15? <laughs> I'll hang out with you. Okay. 4:45 is a long time away. <laughs> Uh, let's talk a little, if we can, just talk a little bit about like modalities and chronic pain, and then kind of wrap up with like a little bit of business stuff so that Lori. Uh, uh, can I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a certified uh, massage therapist before this is over. Um, <laughs> Better than one, most, one, probably. <laughs> uh, one thing I get asked a lot uh, about modalities is if I do deep tissue, um, and that's another mis I mean, a huge misnomer. What about does that deep mean? Deep tissue versus deep pressure. Um, and I end, up, I end up explaining, spending half my day, I feel like, explaining what I do. Um, and as a rolfer, I'd be curious to know what are your thoughts, Lou, on uh, yeah. chronic pain, deep tissue slash deep pressure versus mild pastoral versus rolfing? That's like five topics, and you want me to quickly talk about all of those in less than 15 yeah, I thought, minutes. I thought, I thought you were good. <laughs> well, if we could, I, all right. Can, can I make a joke? You know, it, within the German language, you can have like individual words. You know that encompass yeah, that's right. like all together. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, actually, making whole sentences, you can also only do that in Turkish, as far as I understand. But okay. Um, Deep tissue, I still don't know what it means because everybody <laughs> understands something completely different. So I just, I, I don't try defining it at all. If a client says, I like deep tissue, I always ask them what they mean and what they liked when they got work done, and that's pretty <laughs> much it. Usually, I just suppose that they mean not a spa frou frou massage, and <laughs> usually that is all how they define deep tissue. Um, deep pressure. And then you bring up chronic pain. You certainly don't need deep pressure in regards to working with chronic pain, but maybe a little more than in working with acute pain, because then you usually don't need deep pressure at all. Uh, rolfing doesn't mean deep pressure. Rolfing doesn't even necessarily mean deep tissue. And rolfing doesn't mean myofascial release. But in a rolfing session, I use a lot of myofascial mobilization techniques. The way I differentiate between what I do as a rolfer and what a technique is, I, I like to use the example of, you know, you see some guy um, using a hammer and a nail to, put, to get two pieces of wood together. You don't know whether that guy is just your neighbor Joey or a carpenter. You have no idea. You just see him do one thing. That's one technique. It doesn't mean anything about whether he knows about the materials he's using, whether he knows about the structure of what he's building, whether he has any idea of how the influence of gravity is going to um, pull on that connection that he just established. You don't know what he knows. He, he's just banging on a piece of wood. <laughs> Myofascial mobilization techniques now usually are a bit more sophisticated than banging on wood, but I guess you get what I'm saying, right? I mean, as Rolfers, we spend hours and hours and days on days 
just looking at how people stand, how they sit down, how they walk, how they run, and then we do it all over again, and then we're still trying to see something, and in the beginning it was driving me nuts. You know, we, we would be watching each other walk around in underwear, up and down the room, including the Mormon girl, which freaked her out, and I didn't understand it because I'm the German girl, and as you all know, we drop our clothes where we stand all the time. So... <laughs> A lot of what Rolf makes Rolfing Rolfing is understanding about structures, understanding about alignment, is alignment and movement, and trying to see patterns and then trying to work with it. And there is kind of a formula to the system of 10 sessions that we learn in school, but deliberately that session, these, these 10 sessions are a learning tool for the rolfer and their learning tool for the client. So in a lot of cases, I don't work with that specific protocol. And I, so, I yeah, I, I use... I, I really like the whole rolfing idea of taking the person as a whole instead of just attacking the, the symptom, uh, trying to find the cause, and looking at the whole entire structure. I think it's great. Um, that that kind of I, is part of the idea, but it doesn't work. <laughs> I, I never understood the ten session thing. Right? Where did the ten? Who pulled the ten sessions out of out of whose who's butt? <laughs> I don't. Know. That that's out of Ida Rolf's butt. Um, oh, okay. she, she, she was the one who came up with a series of ten sessions, and um, really, in my opinion, it's just a tool that makes sure that you don't forget anything. A lot of people try to work with this idea, okay, you have pain in your shoulder and it really comes from uh, when you sprained your ankle when you were three years old, but it, it's, it, we all know it's not that easy and it's never that, that's not the cause. It doesn't work like that. It's, it, people want that and clients really want that and they eat it up when practitioners give it to them. <laughs> But usually my answer by now, I've been doing it for a while, people like me, I don't care anymore. I say, I don't know. I don't know why your shoulder hurts. I can make, <laughs> I can make up theories, and, and then I do. I mean, I give them a few theories because they love it so much, and, and I have to give them something that they love. But I tell them, this is just what I'm going to work with right now, and the way you work, that gives me an idea that it might not be good, even if you're sitting in perfect posture and the most expensive chair you could find. If you're sitting there for eight hours, it's going to do some damage. So I just try to educate people on the importance of getting up and moving around and maybe doing something different than what they were doing for the last two hours. Like, I mean, if you're sitting in front of your computer, just get up and move your arms backwards. Do a few hip flexor stretches. Do things that counteract what you have just been doing, even if it's just for 30 seconds. So it's a lot of these educational things that I bring in. And then I use myofascial mobilization techniques to just give them better range of motion. As you all probably know, that usually works instantly. Then they have a different sensation. They perceive their body differently, and then it's easier to learn new movement patterns. And that's pretty much how it works. I don't think that you're unearthing hidden memories that miraculously <laughs> are released from the cells. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything like that. But <laughs> People love it, and they like talking about it. <laughs> you did it, Lou. I knew you could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts, Jessica, on, on uh, like deep tissue, deep pressure? Um, what, what kind of? I, mean, I don't know. Do you do? Do you do much of that in your practice? Um, I do a lot of deep pressure. Um, I, I naturally do it, and I use the term deep pressure um, when someone asks for deep tissue, that's where I tell them the definition that I that I learned from school. And that's, you know, working at the uh, the deeper tissues, not the ones that you typically associate with a massage. Um, but yeah, just uh, my natural uh, pressure is deeper and uh, the train of thought. Um, <laughs> I'm still digesting everything that we've said. <laughs> no. Um, no, I think I think that's another uh, another thing too that I had brought up is it, it does get frustrating with all these phrases now, all these little coins, um, modalities that people have invented out of, out of thin air that are basically either you know, myofascial or you know mm. 
variations of that. It, they, they have to put their name to it, and it doesn't really make a difference. But it's pretty much all the same. Um, I look at I look at deep pressure is one uh, mm -hmm. modality, <laughs> and then mild fascia release, which includes deep tissue, uh, because that's what you're doing. You're, you're obviously affecting the tissues on a much deeper level. So all the other stuff, structural integration, trigger trigger work, and Jones and all the other stuff. It's 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 just trigger point work. I mean, it's all. It, I just, it gets very frustrating. I mean, imagine for us how frustrating it is when we don't even know what people are talking about sometimes. Imagine the public. They mm -hmm. they just hear these phrases and then they just repeat them. Um, and unfortunately, I think it does hurt some of our businesses because that's what people are. They type in their search engine deep tissue massage. They don't even know what they're really looking for. They just don't want foo foo. So <laughs> maybe we should. <laughs> Well, that's why you all have to have a page that explains deep tissue massage and uh, mentions the word often enough. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe once I have my blog for a while, I'll start um, hyperlinking words on my front page saying, you know, here's what I do, here's how I define, so people never click anything. You know, I'll be happy. No, they do. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've uh, had conversations with... Um, Friends online. I'm on. I'm online fairly often. Um, I'm, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't instant message someone. They ask me a question. I warn them. Um, this is going to take a lot of typing, so you know, go get a cup of coffee or something. So I type it out. Why don't we? Why don't we just call? Well, they're busy. I'm not. I'm just going to type it out. Then they can come back and read it at their leisure. And um, you know, and I'll, I'll say, have a new blog post. Right. <laughs> Um, then uh, you know I'll say so. What do you think? And then they'll say about what? And I'm just you've got to be kidding me. Scroll up, genius. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm a, I I get a little. Most of them are programmers. They should know to scroll up. <laughs> <laughs> So we had mentioned chronic pain shortly. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious because I, I think we all treat people who have chronic pain and it's always a mystery and it's always difficult and actually part of why I got out of doing acupuncture and got more into doing body work was that I found specifically the people who have chronic conditions with acupuncture it was always like hit or miss. I mean either it's these amazing crazy results or it's like Nothing, meh, maybe, okay. How? What are your experiences? Ah, um, I've had one experience with acupuncture, and based on that one, I would never do it again, because the acupuncturist um, told them my problems. I told them what I would like to fix, and. Um, I only really went because I was working in the same building as them, and it's just if I'm, if they want me to promote them or you know ask my clients, have you tried acupuncture? I should try it myself. And I've gone through years of physical therapy to correct certain issues, lots of doctors' appointments, and it's taken a lot of work, like an insane amount of work, um, 20 years worth of work. And then I go in and they're saying, oh yeah, you've got toxins built up in the back of your knee and that's why you have this limp. And I'm just going to do this and this. And it's just, you know, if you have that little regard for all of the work I've put into it and you think that this is, that, oh, and, and memories too, you know, I've got memories and toxins built up in the back of my knee. I just I, I wouldn't go back and I wouldn't recommend it if that is the prevailing because he's supposed to be a doctor and I was not sold well, on it. <laughs> I, I yeah I wasn't even asking about acupuncture experiences. I was more curious about how you treat chronic pain. Mm, sorry. <laughs> when I when I get someone that has chronic pain issues, um, first and foremost is I want to see how serious they are about getting over it. Uh, mm -hmm. if they're willing to invest. Um, I, I really don't like seeing people just on a one-time basis, so I'm pretty upfront with people. Um, and I obviously I'm a crystal ball and I have no idea how long it's going to take. But I, I, I get a feel for whether or not they're going to be uh, coming in one or two times, or if they're really going to be, if they're actually to the point where they are sick of this and they really want to get better, or if they just want to tell you care, and then they can just go on complaining about it tomorrow. I don't want my name attached to someone who never actually finished treatment and got better. So 
Yes. That's my yeah. First thing is I want I want people that I see to actually get better, and so I want to make sure that they're not that they're really understanding. It's not there's no such thing as a one-time miracle. Um, right. Session. Um, so I start with that, and then um, I spend a lot of time discussing um, past issues with them. I kind of get a feel for who they are, what they do, um, try to figure out where these if it's a pattern, where the pattern came from, try to make corrections, because I definitely don't want to be fighting against myself, working on something, and then they're going to go spend the next, uh, you know, seven, six, seven days undoing everything that I'm doing. So, I mean, I spend a lot right. of time trying to figure out who they are, what they do, and what's happening. Um, I spend probably an hour and a half to two hours for my first session, um, mm -hmm. and I can really get a good feel for someone. And then we move from there. Um, and then addressing some of the, not just the symptoms, so kind of figuring out where where the symptoms come from and how long they've been there and kind of, you know, breaking down the structure, um, trying to find the cause. Can I, I think that, that uh, no, I'm sorry, you go ahead, Jessica, and I'll go after you. I'll just, so how dare you talk, Lori? <laughs> very briefly, I think that's <laughs> yeah. No, no, I won't, I won't. <laughs> that, that's another thing um, on the education where uh, I don't remember ever learning in school that eventually you just have to let go of a client because, um, you know, they're coming back and they're complaining about these problems and they're not improving and, um, yeah, there's just, there were no uh, lessons on ethics and letting a client go if there's, you know, if there's no improvement. Okay, Laurie. <laughs> I was coming from a client side. Um, I think it's a really great question, Lou, because I actually experienced chronic pain from an injury, and it took a long time for for anyone to figure out what was going on, me included. Even trying to to identify, oh, it hurts there, not there, and and it turned right. out to really be pro pro well, I say probably piriformis syndrome, and I'm sure you guys uh -huh. have treated that, and that's really hard to find because it's so deep and it was kind of nebulous, it was sort of all over my hip and it came from mm -hmm. some injury that I didn't have one time, it probably developed over time and so I never had a really hard time figuring out and what I went to a physical therapist first and actually went to an, I went to a, an osteo um, a surgeon, whatever they are, <laughs> and uh, an orthopedic surgeon and you know he was used to treating football players with ACL injuries and had no idea what to do with me and then because I thought at first it was my IT band and anyway then I went mm -hmm. to physical therapist and then they sent me to a chiropractor and then eventually I kind of started seeing a regular massage therapist and what I discovered is actually not one thing of those did it but the combination of yeah. certain physical therapy exercises having a chiropractor do some work and then having regular massage yeah. and mm -hmm. And this kind of touches on some of several things you guys have talked about all night, which, you know, one of the things that will improve, I think, the um, public perception of massage therapists is that is that medical legitimacy, and part of that comes from really working together with doctors and um, and chiropractors, legitimate ones, and 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 even in, um, you know, all different types. But it'd be great if you could walk into a clinic and see, you know, get some PT advice and get some chiropractic care and get get a massage and have have all those things available to you. And I know that's not always, lo you know, logistically possible, but just the, you know, it's usually not one thing that solves your problems with chronic pain. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And the and chiropractors so are doing that. I mean, the chiropractors are trying to do exactly that. Most of them are offering physical therapy. Most of them are offering massage therapy now. But they also try to run a profitable business. So unfortunately, <laughs> the skill level of their PTs and MTs is usually rather rotten. And that's, that's the big problem. They're trying to say, we are offering all that in one location, and then they don't. <laughs> Well, and I, right, right. And, you know, I think, too, at least from my personal experience, I remember 25 years ago thinking chiropractors were a joke. And maybe mm -hmm. they were, too. I think that has gotten probably better. But Oh, it's gotten worse. I mean, now they're just better about marketing. <laughs> but I would never have seen a chiropractor. I would have thought, you know, that's a quack. Right. That's not somebody who knows anything about the body or... 
And then I was prescribed to go to one for this injury, and uh -huh. he was trying to run a business too, and I could sort of recognize that he was always wanting to add new things to my treatment. But some of them did work, and it was actually nice yeah. to have someone who would try out stuff and like try to try to get at the root of my problem and not just yes. say, oh, it's an ACL something or other. You need to yes. go over here to physical therapy for six weeks and be done with it. And that was ridiculous. So I think that's where some people drop the ball. They they worry too much about the business end. Uh, obviously it's important uh, where you have yeah. to make a living. And if I don't make enough money I can't advertise and I can advertise no one to know about me. Um, <laughs> but but at the same time <clears throat> if they it's just quality. If you spend enough time with someone, you really show you care and you really give it all you've got you're going to help them. Um, and if you can't, then you should be at a point where you're obviously you can easily pass them on to someone who can. And you still, it's a, it's a plus call for you either way because the person's going to remember that you gave it all you did. And even if you couldn't help them 100%, you pass them on. But I think the problem is sometimes, especially chiropractors, they focus way too much on the business end of it. I mean, if you're, if you're helping people left and right and people are getting better, you are going to be known as the guy to go to. So it, it's a balance. But unfortunately, I think sometimes they worry a little too much about the Sure. Mm -hmm. But well, they... Well, then it's a turn-off. Oh. Yeah. But they, they right. as a profession, it's kind of interesting how they've yeah. evolved in the public's eye as being yeah. more legitimate. And that's something that massage therapists can sort of strive to do without maybe the end result being the same, but it, mm -hmm. at least having that... Like you said, Jemin, if you... if if you spend time with your clients and you're educating them and you're helping them feel better and even take some accountability for their own um, their own recovery from an injury or from chronic pain or just stress, then they see you as just as legitimate as their doctor mm -hmm. for for helping. Maybe not prescribing certainly and not diagnosing, but definitely for helping them understand how to be healthier, and that ultimately too is what helps separate you from massage envy and and any other franchise where they don't get that care and particularly that that attention to medical and health issues rather than just feeling good after a massage you know, with a massage so yeah I just, I just recently got that um, I had a guy who before he made a, a very important medical decision he wanted to discuss it with me first obviously I'm not going to give a medical advice but he, he and, I've, and I've been getting it more and more, I think, because the longer I'm in practice, the more I do spend time listening uh, mm -hmm. and then asking them questions to make sure that yeah. they understand the process. Right. Um, a lot of times, I'll ask them questions that are like, yeah, I never even thought to ask. I'm going to mm -hmm. go ask the doctor. Um, you you can't go wrong with, with spending time listening. Um, I, I think that's, if that's the one thing that, that I've learned at 15 years is um, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think all all medical professions should take that advice. Yes. <laughs> Listen to their patients more. Well, everyone, we got it. We actually blew through the hour. That was fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's make notes on some stuff we wanted to talk about. We didn't get through, um, and maybe we won't wait a month next time. Maybe we'll do it next few weeks if you guys are up for it. Yeah, certainly. No, sounds good. So, all right. Well, thank you so Very much for the lively conversation, and I, as always, it's a pleasure talking with you guys. Thank you. Thank you, That's Jessica. Nice. Good seeing you. <laughs> good seeing everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Good night.